In this lesson, you're gonna learn how to inoculate an agar plate. Now, this is an agar plate because it's a Petri dish, which is the plastic dish, and in it, we have poured agar jelly that has nutrients and mineral ions in there that enable the bacteria to grow. In this case, you can see all of these little dots are a type of bacteria. Now, each one of these dots will have started off as one bacteria. And then we've left it for two or three days at 20 degrees, and they've gone from one to two to four to eight to 16 to 32, and so on, until they've created their own colony. Each of these blobs is a colony of bacteria that was produced from one bacteria. So let's have a little look ahead in the video at how we've prepared that. To make the agar jelly, we take 28 grams and we dissolve it in a litre of water. We heat it up until it completely dissolves. We then quickly pour it into Petri dishes. We do it quickly and put the lid on to avoid contamination. It really doesn't take long for the agar jelly to set. Because we poured the agar jelly into the Petri dishes while it was still warm, we do have a bit of moisture that has accumulated, but that's okay. We're gonna store our Petri dishes upside down so the moisture won't sit on the agar jelly, it's gonna sit on the lid. We stack the agar plates together. We don't want to seal them with sellotape at this stage, but we want to make sure the lid doesn't fall off. So we put them back into the packet, put them back into the fridge to keep them fresh. And just in case there has been any contamination, by storing them in the fridge, it will slow or prevent bacterial growth. You'll use a nichrome wire to inoculate your agar plate. Nichrome wire is used because it heats up very quickly. You'll see it glow red in the Bunsen burner flame, but it also cools down very quickly. To prevent cross-contamination, wash your area, wash your hands, and wear some gloves. Remember that ethanol is also highly flammable, so keep it to one side, out of range of the Bunsen burner flame. Then light your Bunsen burner. Remembering that when you hold your splint upright, it slows down the flame, turning it the other way gives fuel to the flame and it will burn much faster. You're in control of it, not it in control of you. Stand back, don't look over the Bunsen burner and light it. You'll want the whole of the Bunsen burner to be closed because then it's got less oxygen and your flame will light on a safety flame. Now, inside this McCartney bottle is nutrient broth and the bacteria that you're going to culture. Okay, let's watch this technique really slowly. Here, you can see I'm hooking the lid of the McCartney bottle in my hand, it's in my little finger, and I twist the McCartney bottle to open it. From there, I wave the neck of the McCartney bottle through the flame to sterilize it. Then sterilize the nichrome wire in the flame, dip it in the ethanol, before taking some of my culture medium from the McCartney bottle. And before I add it to the agar plate, I'm going to quickly wand the neck of the McCartney bottle back to the flame, put the lid on. Then I take my agar plate, I lift the lid, but not completely, and I streak it across. Remember, I'm gonna do four streaks. The first one came from the McCartney bottle, streak two comes from streak number one, and streak three comes from streak number two, and so on. You are then ready to place the lid on. You're gonna seal it with three pieces of sellotape. Now, why is that? Quite simply, we don't want the lid to fall off. We don't want bacteria to get in, and we don't want bacteria to escape. Then place your initials and date on the underside. Let me explain why we've used the four streak method. In the McCartney bottle is the culture media with the bacteria. In that bacteria, it goes from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32 to 64, blah, blah, blah. And before we know it, we can very, if we leave it a little bit too long, we can have a culture of bacteria that is very, very, very concentrated. And what that means is that when we dip the nichrome wire into it and we streak it across our plate, we left with a big, thick, sludgy line because there's so much bacteria on that nichrome wire. So by taking the nichrome wire out and sterilizing it again, if we draw it down now from this area, what we're in effect doing is just pulling out one or two colonies 
and streaking it across there. We then clean that again by putting it in the hot Bronson burner flame, putting it in the ethanol, and then we enter our plate here and we're literally just carrying a little bit of the bacteria across. We do the same and then we take it from there and then we can see that we have reduced the amount of bacteria. So we've got individual colonies that have arisen from one bacteria. Here, it's a big sludge because there's so many bacteria and you can see that they reduce down each time. Let's just quickly answer these questions. So the first one is, why don't we seal the tape all the way around the outside of the Petri dish? Surely that would be more secure than three pieces. Well, we don't want to do that because we don't want to establish an anaerobic environment. Reason why is because most bacteria that can cause us harm are anaerobic, they are pathogenic, they are harm-causing bacteria to us. So if we created that anaerobic environment, it would give them an opportunity to thrive, to be cultivated, and then if we have an accident with the Petri dish, or when we're trying to dispose of it, then perhaps it could get into our environment and cause us harm. Number two, why do we store the Petri dishes upside down? For the same reason, remember, when you respire, you produce um, water vapor, you know that because if you breathe on a uh, mirror, you'll get condensation. The bacteria do the same. When that water vapor is given off, it then comes back down and it sinks as a film on the agar jelly, which again creates an anaerobic environment. So by storing them the other way, the bacteria will stay attached to the agar, which is on the top, and the water will sink to the bottom. Next one, why do we cultivate bacteria at 20 degrees in schools? Well, the reason why is because, again, if we cultivated bacteria at 37 degrees, they're the bacteria that like to live in your body. We don't want to do that. We want to encourage different types of bacteria to grow. And therefore, by cultivating at 20 degrees, it's a way of reducing the risk of working with bacteria.